In this video, we're going to draw the electron configurations for carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And this video is assuming that you already understand a little bit about electron configuration, that you understand the Pauli exclusion principle, the Aufbau principle, which states that our orbitals get filled from low energy to high energy, and you know the difference between diamagnetic and paramagnetic. So let's get started with carbon. Carbon has six electrons in it, and what we're going to do is draw both an energy level diagram as well as an orbital box diagram before we write the electron configuration. So in the energy diagram, I'm going to draw the boxes or the spaces that we need to represent the orbitals that are going to be filled up by the six electrons in carbon. And we're probably just going to be using the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital, and the 2p orbital. And then if we want to do this in box diagram format, we would draw one box to represent the 1s orbital, draw another box to represent the 2s orbital, and then three boxes to represent the 2p orbitals. So we're going to go ahead and put these six electrons in. I'm going to put them in the energy level diagram first. We're going to follow the Aufbau principle, which says that we're completely filling up low energy orbitals before moving up to a higher energy orbital. So that means we're going to start with 1s, and we're going to completely fill it, two electrons, one up, one down. And then we move up to 2s, and then we're going to put two electrons in there. So now we've got a total of four electrons accounted for. Now we're going to move up to the 2p orbital. We've got to put two electrons up there. And those two electrons are going to go spinning in the same direction, but in two separate orbitals. So this is an application of something called Hund's rule. So let's write that down. Hund's rule... Hund's rule tells us that as we are filling orbitals that are equal in energy, like as we are filling the 2p orbitals, every orbital gets one electron before any of them gets two. So every 2p, or this is also going to apply to 3p, it's also going to apply to 3d, etc. Every orbital that is equal in energy gets one electron before any of them get to. And the analogy that a, a lot of chemistry teachers like to use here is sitting on a bus. As you're getting on a bus, everybody sits by themselves first before anybody starts sitting with somebody else, assuming that you're getting on the bus with a bunch of strangers. So here are the one, two, three, four, five, six electrons for carbon in the uh, energy diagram. Let's do that same thing for the box diagram. Two electrons in 1s, two electrons in 2, 2s, and two electrons in the 2p. In reading these diagrams, this one or this one, we can come up with the electron configuration. So first we have 1s with two electrons in it, so that's going to be 1s2. And then we have 2s with two electrons in it, so that will be 2s2. And then we have 2p with two electrons in it, so that will also be 2p2. We don't need to distinguish the three different p orbitals from each other. We can just put them all together like this and say 2p2. Sometimes some people maybe would want to distinguish them like say 2px, there's one, 2py, there's one, 2pz. In this case, there aren't any, but that's um, typically not necessary. It's typically sufficient to just lump all of the 2p orbitals together. So here's our electron configuration. Let's go ahead and classify this molecule as dia or paramagnetic. If we were only going off of the electron configuration, it kind of looks like it is diamagnetic, like it's just a whole bunch of sets of two. But when we look at the energy diagram or the box diagram, we can see that we have 2p orbitals that are unpaired. These, or, these uh, excuse me, 2p electrons. These electrons are not paired with each other. In order to be paired, they would have to be occupying the exact same spot, one up, one down. These are paired electrons, and these are paired, but these two are not. So carbon is not diamagnetic. Carbon is paramagnetic because of its unpaired electrons. Let's continue with our next example, which is nitrogen. 
So over here, before we get started, you can see that I kind of carried over a, a synopsis of Hun's rule. We're going to half fill each orbital, and then we're going to fill up each orbital, and then we're going to move up to the next level. That's sort of our steps of progressing through the diagram. So let's go ahead for nitrogen. Let's sketch out an empty energy level diagram. 1s, which is followed by 2s, which is followed by the 2p orbitals. And then let's go ahead also and make a box diagram, 1s. And as you've done a few more of examples of these, you'll come up with your own preference of if you like energy diagrams better or if you like box diagrams better. Like I've said in previous video, I prefer the energy diagram. I like to have them stacked in order of energy. So for nitrogen, we've got seven electrons to work with. We're going to pay attention to Hoon's rule and Aufbau principle, and we're just going to start filling them up from bottom to top. So we're just going to count. There's one, two electrons. Now we move up. Three, four electrons. Now we move up. Five, six, seven. Again, we're putting one electron in each of the two p orbitals before we double any of them up. Let's do the same thing with the box diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And from this, we can write the electron configuration. 1s has two electrons, so that's 1s2. 2s has two electrons, so that is 2s2. And the 2p has three electrons. 2p3. Let's classify this. Is it diamagnetic or paramagnetic? We've got unpaired electrons, so this is going to be paramagnetic. And you probably realize that anytime you have an odd number of electrons, the only option is, is paramagnetic. It's impossible for it to be diamagnetic. So there's the electron configuration for nitrogen. Let's move forward and do our last example of this video, which is going to be oxygen. Again, we're going to go with our energy diagram. We are going to need 1s, we are going to need 2s, and we are going to need 2p, and our box diagram, which again, there really isn't any difference between what the box diagram and the energy diagram convey. They both are showing the same information. It's just a preference of how you would like to see it. Now we're going to fill eight electrons into these diagrams, half filling each orbital and then filling each orbital and then moving up to the next energy level, counting as we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So since we half, we half filled the 2p orbital completely, when it was time for us to put that eighth electron in there, we were allowed to start pairing it up. I just always go back to the beginning. I always go from left to right and then just go back. But that paired up electron could have been here or it could have been here. It does not really matter where it goes. Let's go to the box diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And from this information, let's write our electron configuration. We can see, looking at the diagram, we have 1s2, we have 2s2, and for our 2ps, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 2p4. This is another one that if we just looked at the electron configuration, it might look like it's diamagnetic because we have this even number of electrons, but we can see from the energy diagram and from the box diagram that we have unpaired electrons, so this is paramagnetic.